John James Conyers, Jr. is the U.S. Representative for Michigan's 13th Congressional District, serving in Congress since 1965. The district includes the western half of Detroit, as well as Dearborn, Highland Park, and most of the Down River suburbs including Yandot and Romulus. He is a member of the Democratic Party. He is currently the second longest serving incumbent member of the House, after fellow Michigan Democratic Congressman John Dingell and the second longest incumbent member of the entire Congress by length of service, also after Dingell. Early life, education, and early career, after graduating from Northwestern High School in Detroit, Conyers served in the Michigan National Guard 1948 to Euro 50. U.S. Army 1950 Euro 54 and the U.S. Army Reserves 1954 Euro 57. Conyers served for a year in Korea as an officer in the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers and was awarded combat and merit citations. Conyers grew up in Detroit and received both his BA and his law degree from Wayne State University. Conyers was present in Selma, Alabama, on October 7, 1963 for the civil rights movement voter registration drive known as Freedom Day. He served as an assistant to U.S. Congressman John Dingell, Jr., prior to his election to Congress. Detroit mayoral campaigns, while serving in the U.S. House, Conyers made two unsuccessful runs for mayor of Detroit, one in 1989 against incumbent Coleman Young and again in 1993. 1989 Incumbent Democratic Mayor Coleman Young decided to run for a fifth term, despite growing unpopularity in the declining economy of Detroit. In the September primary, Young won with 51% of the vote. Accountant Tom Barrow qualified for the November runoff by getting second place with 24%, and Conyers got third place with 18% of the vote. Young defeated Barrow in the runoff with 56% of the vote. 1993 in June 1993, incumbent Democratic Mayor Coleman Young decided to retire instead of seeking a sixth term, citing his age and health, although many believed he decided not to run because of his growing unpopularity. In a Detroit News poll in February, 81% said Young should retire. Conyers was one of the 23 candidates who qualified for ballot access. Dennis Archer was a clear front-runner from the beginning. He was a 51-year-old former state Supreme Court justice who raised over $1.6 million. He won the September primary with 54% of the vote. Conyers came in fourth place. Archer won the November election. U.S. House of Representatives Elections In 1964, he ran for an open seat in what was then the 1st District, and defeated Republican Robert Blackwell with 84% of the vote. He was re-elected 13 times with even larger margins. After the 1990 United States Census, Michigan lost a congressional district and Conyers's district was renumbered to the 14th district. In 1992, he won re-election to his 15th term in his new district with 82% of the vote against Republican nominee John Gordon. He won re-election another nine times after that. His worst re-election performance was in 2010 when he got 77% of the vote against Republican nominee Don Ukrainik. In total, he has won re-election 23 times and has served 24 terms. He is the second longest serving current member of the House, as well as after World War II. He is the second longest serving member of either House of Congress in Michigan's history, trailing only his former boss, Dingell. He is also the last member of the large Democratic freshman class of 1964 who is still serving in the House. In May of 2014, Wayne County Clerk Kathy Garrett determined that Conyers had not submitted enough valid nominating petition signatures to appear on the August 2014 primary election ballot. Two of his petition circulators were found not to have been registered voters at the time they were collecting signatures, as required under Michigan law. However, on May 23, Federal District Judge Matthew Lightman issued an injunction placing Conyers back on the ballot, ruling that the requirement that circulators be registered voters was similar to an Ohio law previously found unconstitutional by a federal appeals court in 2008. The Michigan Secretary of State's office subsequently announced they would not appeal the ruling. Tenure, 
Conyers is one of the 13 founding members of the Congressional Black Caucus and is considered the dean of that group. Formed in 1969, the CBC was founded to strengthen African American lawmakers' ability to address the legislative concerns of black and minority citizens. He has served longer in Congress than any other African American. In 1971, he was one of the original members of Nixon's enemies list. In 1965, John Conyers won a seat as a freshman on the Influential Judiciary Committee, which was then under the leadership of Democratic Congressman Emanuel Salo of New York. At the time, the assignment was an elite one, as judiciary ranked behind only ways and means and appropriations in terms of the number of members who sought assignment there. According to the National Journal, Conyers has been considered, with Pete Stark, John Lewis, Jim McDermott, and Barbara Lee, to be one of the most liberal members of Congress for many years. Civil rights icon Rosa Parks served on Conyers' staff between 1965 and 1988. Conyers is known as one of the opponents of the drive to regulate online gambling. He has likened the Unlawful Internet Gambling Enforcement Act of 2006, hidden within the Safe Port Act, to prohibition. After Martin Luther King, Jr.'s assassination in 1968, Conyers introduced the first bill in Congress to make King's birthday a national holiday. It is now celebrated as Martin Luther King, Jr. Day. Conyers introduced the Commission to Study Reparation Proposals for African Americans Act in January 1989, and has reintroduced anew this bill each congressional term. This bill calls for the creation of a commission to research the history of slavery and its effects on current America, resulting in recommendations on how to remedy this injustice. Its current version was introduced and referred to committee on January 3, 2013. Nixon and Watergate Conyers was critical of Richard Nixon during his tenure, and as a result was number 13 on President Richard Nixon's enemies list during Nixon's 1969 Euro 74 presidential tenure. The president's chief counsel described him as coming on fast, and that he was emerging as a black anti-Nixon spokesman. Conyers voted on the Articles of Impeachment against Nixon in July 1974. He is the last remaining member of the House Judiciary Committee who did so, although another fellow committee member, Democratic Congressman Charles B. Rangel, of New York, is still in Congress. National Health Care Act The United States National Health Care Act is a bill submitted to the United States House of Representatives by Conyers which, as of September 29, 2008, has 93 co-sponsors. It was first introduced, with 25 co-sponsors, in 2003, and reintroduced each session since then. The Act calls for the creation of a universal single-payer health care system in the United States, in which the government would provide every resident health care free of charge. In order to eliminate disparate treatment between richer and poorer Americans, the Act would also prohibit private insurers from covering any treatment or procedure already covered by the Act. The bill is currently in the House Energy and Commerce's Subcommittee on Health. Downing Street Memo, on May 5, 2005, Conyers and 88 other members of Congress wrote an open letter to the White House inquiring about the Downing Street Memo, a leaked memorandum that revealed an apparent secret agreement between the United States and the United Kingdom to attack Iraq in 2002. The Times reported that newly discovered documents reveal British and U.S. intentions to invade Iraq and leaders of the two countries had discussed creating pretextual justifications for doing so. The documents go on to say that Tony Blair decided the United States would need to create conditions to justify the war. The memo story broke in the United Kingdom, but did not receive much coverage in the United States, prompting Conyers to lament, this should not be allowed to fall down the memory hole during wall-to-wall -wall coverage of the Michael Jackson trial and a runaway bride. Conyers and others reportedly considered sending a congressional investigation delegation to London. What Went Wrong in Ohio, in May, 2005, Conyers released What Went Wrong in Ohio, the Conyers Report on the 2004 presidential election, which discusses the voting irregularities in the state of Ohio during the 2004 U.S. presidential election. The evidence offered consists of statistical abnormalities in the differences between exit poll results and actual votes registered at those locations. 
the book also discusses reports of faulty electronic voting machines and the lack of credibility of those machines used to tally votes. He was one of 31 members of the House who voted not to count the electoral votes from Ohio in the 2004 presidential election. The Constitution in Crisis On August 4, 2006, Conyers released his report, The Constitution in Crisis, The Downing Street Minutes and Deception, Manipulation, Torture, Retributions and Cover-ups in the Iraq War an edited collection of information intended to serve as evidence that the Bush administration altered intelligence to justify the 2003 invasion of Iraq. The Constitution in Crisis examines much of the evidence presented by the Bush administration prior to the invasion and questions the credibility of their sources of intelligence. In addition, the document investigates the conditions that led to the torture scandal at Abu Ray prison in Iraq as well as further evidence of torture having been committed but not made known to the public. Finally, the document reports on a series of smear tactics purportedly used by the administration in dealing with its political adversaries. The document calls for the censure of President George W. Bush and Vice President Dick Cheney. Notably, however, Conyers refused to back impeachment proceedings. On anti-Muslim intolerance Conyers has proposed House Resolution 288, which condemns a Euro or a religious intolerance a Euro but emphasizes Islam as needing special protection from acts of violence and intolerance. It states that a Euro or each should never be official policy of the United States government to disparage the Quran, Islam, or any religion in any way, shape, or form. A Euro and a Euro or a calls upon local, state and federal authorities to work to prevent bias-motivated crimes and acts against all individuals, including those of the Islamic faith a Euro the bill was referred to the House Subcommittee on the Constitution in June 2005. Conyers v. Bush, see also Conyers v. Bush, in April 2006 Conyers, together with ten other senior congressmen, filed an action in the U.S. District Court in the Eastern District of Michigan, Southern Division, challenging the constitutionality of the Deficit Reduction Act of 2005. The complaint alleged the bill was not afforded due consideration by the United States Congress before being signed by the President. The action was subsequently dismissed on grounds of lack of standing. Ethics Controversy In letters sent separately to the House Ethics Committee, the FBI, and the U.S. Attorney's Office, Two former aides of Conyers alleged that Conyers used his staff to work on several local and state campaigns, and forced them to a babysit and chauffeur his children. In late December 2006, Conyers accepted responsibility for possibly violating House rules. A statement issued December 29, 2006, by the House Ethics Committee Chairman Doc Hastings and Ranking Minority Member Howard Berman, said that Conyers acknowledged what he characterized as a lack of clarity in his communications with staff members regarding their official duties and responsibilities, and accepted responsibility for his actions. In deciding to drop the matter, Hastings and Berman stated, After reviewing the information gathered during the inquiry, and in light of Rep. Conyers a Euro unregistered trademark cooperation with the inquiry, we have concluded that this matter should be resolved through the issuance of this public statement and the agreement by Rep. Conyers to take a number of additional, significant steps to ensure that his office complies with all rules and standards regarding campaign and personal work by congressional staff. Also, in 1992, he was implicated in the House banking scandal. Copyright Controversy Conyers has come under fire from scientific and taxpayers' advocacy groups for repeatedly introducing a bill that would overturn NIH public access policy, and forbid the government from mandating that federally funded research be made freely available to the public. Critics assert that Conyers has been influenced by publishing houses who have contributed significant money to Conyers. House Report on George W. Bush Presidency and Proposed Inquiry, on January 13, 2009, the House Committee on the Judiciary, led by Conyers, released reigning in the Imperial Presidency, Lessons and Recommendations Relating to the Presidency of George W. Bush, a 486-page report detailing alleged abuses of power that occurred during the Bush administration, and a comprehensive set of recommendations to prevent recurrence. 
Conyers has introduced a bill to set up a Truth Commission panel to investigate alleged policy abuses of the Bush administration. Bill reading controversy, in late July 2009, Conyers, commenting on the health care debate in the House, stated, a Euro OEI love these members, they get up and say, a Euro read the bill. What good is reading the bill if it a Euro unregistered trademark SA thousand pages and you don't need a Euro unregistered trademark T have two days and two lawyers to find out what it means after you read the bill. A Euro his remark brought criticism from government transparency advocates such as the Sunlight Foundation, which referred to readthebill.org in response. In the House, 93 representatives signed a pledge, started by Mike Pence of Indiana, to read a health care bill before voting on it. Bribery conviction of wife, Monica Conyers, on June 16, 2009, the United States Attorney's Office said the two Sanagro Technologies representatives had named Monica Conyers as the recipient of bribes from the company totaling more than $60,000, paid to influence passage of a contract with the city of Detroit. The information was gathered during an FBI investigation into political corruption in the city. She was given a pre-indictment letter, and offered a plea bargain deal in the case. On June 26, 2009, she was charged with conspiring to commit bribery. She pleaded guilty. On March 10, 2010, she was sentenced to 37 months in prison, and also received two years of supervised probation. She ended up serving just over 27 months at the Alderson Federal Prison Camp and was released from federal custody officially on May 16, 2013. Response to accusations regarding American Muslim spies In October, Conyers responded to allegations from four Republican Congress members, in the wake of the launch of the book Muslim Mafia, that the Council on American-Islamic Relations sought to plant Muslim spies in Capitol Hill. He strongly opposed the accusations, saying, Conyers was one of the first three U.S. Congress members to condemn the allegations, joining Andrew Copyright Carson and Loretta Sanchez. WikiLeaks, at a December 16, 2010 hearing of the House Judiciary Committee on the subject of the Espionage Act and the legal and constitutional issues raised by WikiLeaks, Conyers argue, d. strongly against prosecuting WikiLeaks in Hasty Euro, or at all. He strongly defended the whistleblowing organization, saying, As an initial matter, there is no doubt that WikiLeaks is very unpopular right now. Many feel that the WikiLeaks publication was offensive. But being unpopular is not a crime, and publishing offensive information is not either. And the repeated calls from politicians, journalists, and other so-called experts crying out for criminal prosecutions or other extreme measures make me very uncomfortable. Indeed, when everyone in this town is joined together calling for Somronia Euro unregistered trademark S head, that is it a pretty strong sign we need to slow down and take a closer look, L, A us not be hasty, and let us not legislate in a climate of fear or prejudice. 4. In such an atmosphere, it is our constitutional freedoms and our cherished civil rights that are the first to be sacrificed in the full service of our national security. Conyers's statement was in marked contrast to the repeated calls from other members of Congress and Obama administration officials to prosecute WikiLeaks head Julian Assange immediately. Committee assignments, Committee on the Judiciary, as ranking member of the full committee, Representative Conyers may serve as an ex officio member of all subcommittees. Subcommittee on Courts and Competition Policy, Subcommittee on the Constitution, Civil Rights, and Civil Liberties. Subcommittee on Commercial and Administrative Law. Caucus Membership, Founding Member and Dean of the Congressional Black Caucus, Congressional Progressive Caucus, International Conservation Caucus, Out of Afghanistan Caucus, Electoral History. Personal Life, Conyers is married to Monica Conyers. He appeared in Michael Moore's documentary Fahrenheit 9-11 discussing the aftermath of the September 11, 2001 attacks stating that members of Congress don't read most of the bills. Conyers frequently posts at Daily Kos and Democratic Underground. Since May 2005, he has been a contributing blogger at the Huffington Post and his own blog. In 2007 he was awarded the Spingarn Medal from the NAACP, see also, 
United States National Health Care Act a Euro legislation introduced by John Conyers that would provide universal health care in the United States, PROIP Act a Euro legislation introduced by John Conyers that would increase both civil and criminal penalties for trademark and copyright infringement and create a new executive branch office dedicated to enforcing intellectual property laws. References Further reading Biography at the Biographical Directory of the United States Congress, Profile at Project Vote Smart, Financial Information at the Federal Election Commission, Legislation Sponsored at the Library of Congress, CD 14 at Michigan Liberal, John Conyers Oral History Video Excerpts at the National Visionary Leadership Project, External Links, Congressman John Conyers, Jr. Official U.S. House Site, John Conyers Jr. for Congress. Global Family Day Movement co-founded by John Conyers and Linda Grover, John Conyers at DMOZ, Articles, It's Time for Karl Rove to Go, The President Needs to Ask for a Special Prosecutor in the Valerie Plain. Case Congressman John Conyers, Jr., Salon.com, Preserving Democracy, What Went Wrong in Ohio, Status Report of the House Judiciary Committee Democratic Staff, Open Letter to George W. Bush, Re, Downing Street Memo, John Conyers, A.L. Bush asked to explain UK war memo CNN, the Downing Street memo John Conyers, Congressman John Conyers talks about Bush lying America into war and his campaign to hold Bush accountable, the Downing Street memo and more, Buzz Flash, the Constitution in crisis. The Downing Street minutes and deception, manipulation, torture, retribution, and cover-ups in the Iraq war, a motion for censure Congressman John Conyers, Jr., The Nation, Q&A with Conyers Guernica Magazine, May 22, 2006, House Chair warns White House to comply with subpoenas, November 5, 2007.